Hi everyone, welcome to another session of the HBL Files. In today's session, we will be talking about measurements made using the vernier caliper and the micrometer screw gauge. These instruments are actually instruments that measure length, like a ruler. But in a ruler, the most accurate measurement that we can uh, take will be around one millimeter. If the measurement will be smaller than that, then we cannot use the ruler. Instead, for more accurate measurements, we can either use one of these. Let's begin with the vernier caliper. This is how a vernier caliper looks like. So here on this part of the vernier caliper, we can measure the length of objects or even the outside diameter of a cylindrical object. On the other hand, if you want to measure the, the, the inner diameter of a cylindrical object, you may use this part over here. But our main focus for today will be about the following. The main scale and then the movable sliding vernier scale. Here is a simpler version of the, uh, the vernier scale and the millimeter scale or the main scale. Notice that the vernier scale in this example has 10 divisions and the total length of the vernier scale will be around nine millimeters or basically 0 0.9 centimeters. That means each of these divisions in the main scale will be equivalent to one millimeter. Now, again, for this vernier scale, the total length of the vernier scale is 0 0.9 centimeters. That means each division in the vernier scale will be around 0 0.09 centimeters or 0 0.9 millimeters. Now, it is worthy to take note that other vernier calipers have vernier scales that have different lengths. So we must know or we must be very careful in determining the length of each division, depending upon the vernier caliper used. Let's have this example. In determining measurements for uh, using a vernier caliper, we can do it using two methods. For the first method, we must look first for this one. This is the division in the vernier scale that lines up exactly in a division on the main scale. When we're doing measurements, one of the divisions in the vernier scale will line up perfectly with the division in the main scale. Now, notice that there are certain marks for different points. Say, for example, this part of the object was marked O. The other end of the object was marked A. And this mark also pertains to the zero zero division of the vernier scale. And then this point was marked as letter B. Now, for the first method, we just have to do the following. To determine the length of the object, we just have to determine the length from zero up to this point in the main scale and subtract the corresponding measurement shown in the vernier scale from this point up until here okay in the main scale the measurement shown up until this point will be one centimeter and then this will be nine millimeters so 1.9 centimeters and then the corresponding measurement on the vernier scale will be six divisions multiplied by the measurement per division or length per division. This gives us 1.9 centimeters minus 0 0.54 centimeter, which is equal to 1.36 centimeters. This is method one. Now for method two, 
we will, aside from this one, we will also be looking at this point over here. Now, we will check the measurement shown on the main scale right before this zero mark on the vernier scale that measurement will be 1 1.1 1 1.2 and then 1.3 so in our answer the first part of our answer will be 1.3 centimeters and then for the next digit on our answer on the hundreds place we just have to copy the number of division that lines up in the main scale. So here, that division on the vernier scale will be the sixth division. So the measurement will now be 1.36 centimeters. Again, where did we get 1.3? We got this from the main scale, the measurement right before the zero mark in the vernier scale and then this six was determined from the division in the vernier scale that lines up perfectly with the division in the main scale so as you can see for method two it's quite simpler as compared to method one but then again when we have more complicated vernier calipers, it is better to use method one. Let's have some more examples. In this vernier caliper, the first thing that you'll notice will be this one. The length of the vernier scale is not any more equal to nine millimeters. Now, let's count how long this vernier scale will be. If, say for example, we move this vernier scale so that the zero mark lines up with this, then let's count. This will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 millimeters or simply 1.9 centimeters. That means for this vernier caliper, the length of the vernier scale will now be 1.9 centimeters. As compared to the previous one, the length of the vernier scale in the previous example was just 9 millimeters. Here it's 1.9 centimeters. Okay, let's proceed. So again, the first step will be to locate which mark or which division in the vernier scale lines up perfectly with the division in the main scale. Using method one, we apply again the OB minus AB equals OA. We want to find this measurement over here. And to determine that, if we use method one, we first look at this uh, length over here. This is one centimeter. Next, we subtract the corresponding length in the vernier scale. That will be four divisions multiplied by the measurement for each division. And as we have seen, the measurement per division in the vernier scale will be equivalent to 1.9 centimeters divided by 10. Again, why is it like this? Because the length of the vernier scale is 1.9 centimeters and divided by 10 because there are 10 equal divisions in the vernier scale. Simplifying this, we have 1.0 uh, 1 centimeter minus 0 0.76 centimeter. Notice that 1.9 divided by 10 is equal to 0 0.19. 0 0.19 multiplied by 4 is 0. 76. Finally, we'll have the answer of 0 0.24 centimeters as for the measurement. Next, let's use method number two. For method number two, we again take note what's the measurement right before the zero mark. 
that's one, two, two millimeters or 0 0.2 centimeters. And then for the next digit, we simply have to copy the division in the vernier scale that lines up perfectly with a division in the main scale, giving us 0 0.24 centimeter. Next. Again, we will look for the division in the vernier scale that lines up with the main scale, and that will be this one. Then using method number one, the main scale measurement from zero up to this point will be 2.6. Subtracting the corresponding measurement in the vernier scale, we have nine divisions multiplied by the measurement per division. This simplifies to 2.6 centimeters minus 1.71, finally giving us 0 0.89 centimeter. This is method one. Applying method two, let's look at the measurement right before the zero mark. Now, it did not reach nine millimeters. That means we'll just be using eight millimeters or 0 0.8 centimeter. And then, the division on the uh, vernier scale that li uh, lines up with the main scale will be 9. This will be the next digit in our answer, giving us 0 0.89 centimeter. Let's have another one. Again, let's look for the division in the vernier scale that lines up with the main scale. That will be this. And Let's use method number one. The length in the main scale will be 1.8 centimeters minus, so there are two divisions in the vernier scale multiplied by the length per division, giving us 1.8 minus 0 0.38, or simply 1.42. Next, method number two. The measurement right before this zero mark is 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4 centimeters. Then the division in the vernier scale that lines up with the main scale will be 2, giving us an answer of 1.42 centimeters. So that's how we use the vernier scale or uh, this type of vernier scale in determining measurements. Let's now go to the micrometer screw gauge. This is how a micrometer screw gauge looks like. But for our discussion, we'll just be concerned with the following, the sleeve and the thimble, or sometimes we call this one as the drum. Now, in the sleeve, we have the main measurement. The main measurement will, of course, be in millimeters. That means this, this is zero, 0 0.5 millimeter, 1 millimeter, 1 1.5 millimeters, 2 millimeters, and 2.5 millimeters. Next, this drum over here has 50 equal divisions. And one complete rotation of the drum will be equal to 0 0.05 centimeter. That means if there are 50 divisions and one complete rotation of the drum is 0 0.05 centimeters, each of these divisions will be equivalent to 0 0.001 centimeter. Now, let's determine the measurement shown in this example. To find the measurement, it's quite similar to the one we, we are doing with the vernier scale. First, we look at the measurement shown on the main scale. It will be up until 2.5 millimeters or 0 0.25 centimeters. Plus, the number of divisions in the drum, that's 31, 32, 33, multiplied by the measurement per division, finally giving us 0, 0 0.25 plus 0. 0.033. And then the measurement will be equal to 0 0.283 centimeter. 
Next. In this example, again, we determine the measurement shown in this micrometer screw gauge. First, we have this. How did we determine 0.95 centimeter? Looking at this main scale, we again count. So one, two, three, four, five millimeters, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we have an extra line over here, which corresponds to 0 0.5 millimeters. So all in all, this is 9.5 millimeters or 0 0.95 centimeters. Plus number of divisions that will be in line with this in the main scale. That's 28 multiplied by the length per division, giving us a final answer of 0 0.978 centimeters. Next example. Again, we count the measurement in the main scale. That's 15, 16, 17, 18.5 millimeters or 1.85 centimeters. The graduation or the division in the drum that lines up with this line in the main scale is 34 multiplied by the, the measurement per division, giving us a total measurement of 1.884 centimeters. Another one will be this. The measurement on the main scale will be 11, 12, 12 millimeters or 1.2 centimeter. For the drum, we have the 21st division multiplied by the length per division, giving us a final answer of 1.2 two to one centimeters. So that's how we determine measurements using the vernier caliper and the micrometer screw gauge. Now remember that these instruments that I have shown in the discussion are just some of the types of those instruments, meaning the graduations or divisions or measurements that you will see on the instruments themselves might vary depending upon the accuracy of the instrument okay i hope everything's clear guys and thank you for learning with me today see you on the next session of the hbl files